Hey everybody, Brandon here from Cat Intentions, and in today's video, we're taking a look at some must know tips and tricks for Fusion 360. Whether you're just getting started or even using it a little bit, I'm sure there's going to be something for everybody. Before we jump in, I want to say thank you to Zometry for sponsoring today's video. We'll touch base on what they do and how they can help you with your designs and manufacturing later on in the video. And you can check out more about them by using the link up above and down below. All right, let's jump into today's video and get started. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at some tips and tricks when working with Fusion 360. The first one, and maybe the most important tip when using any software is to save your drawing or model first. Make sure you save this. This is going to get the auto save going as well as make sure you've got your part or component in the right location. Hitting that save button up in the top left here or control S is going to bring up your save menu. Give it a name and we're just going to call this uh, example bracket for now. But one thing to note when you're saving any kind of part or drawing be as specific as you can now this may not be a great example here but this is just an example but by giving it a definition or a description in your part name whether it's quarter inch bracket or sheet metal part something to the extent that's going to help you remember this later on when you come back to it is going to be a big time saver now hitting save is going to start our save and you can see now this has been saved up top and this is going to auto save as we work through our project. Next up is keeping things organized by creating a new component each time you start a new piece of your project. Right clicking on the top of your browser here and choosing new component will create a new component. Giving it a name will be helpful. So we're going to call this uh, L angle or something to that extent. And then from here, you simply hit OK and you've got that new component here. Now you can also create components within components and that's going to create an assembly. But these are basically different parts that are going to make up your project or model. And it's going to help keep things organized and separate from each other in case you need to change things or reuse them later individually. This is going to save you a ton of headache in the future. All right, so the next tip here is one that I mention and use with every software that I teach and learn, and that is to memorize and learn as many of the shortcuts within the software as you can. Shortcuts and quick key commands are gonna save you hours over the life of a project and career in any software, and Fusion is no different. Now, we, let's start a sketch here, and we're gonna create a the start of our L angle, and I'll show you a few as we go. So right clicking and choosing sketch down here is going to allow you to start a sketch which is the basis for your uh, part model we're going to use rectangle here and you can choose a plane we're just going to choose the left side here you can choose from a variety of different options including line rectangle circle uh, spline we're going to start with just line work and since you can use smart dimensioning on the fly you're not going to care too much about the dimensions more of just getting the rough shape that you want so you can see here i want an l so i've drawn this out i'm going to double click to end it and then as i mentioned short commands so d is one for smart dimension so you hit d and then choose one of your lines and then drag it up and you can just on the fly dimension and kind of shape your object. So we're going to make this say a 10 millimeter thick L angle. So we're going to do one over here, make that one 10 and hit enter. You know, add one over here and we're going to make this say 40 long on the lower side. And let's make the top side 60 high. And you can see here we've now got an L bracket or say an anchor bracket that is 40 millimeters by 60 millimeters with a 10 millimeter thickness. Now simply hitting the check mark over here is going to finish that sketch. Now as I mentioned, shortcuts are going to come into play. We use the D shortcut for smart dimensioning there. You can also use E for extrude. So if we want to extrude our uh, L angle here, simply hitting E is going to select it and now we can 
easily select the distance we want to extrude. So let's call it 100 millimeters and hit enter. You can see right away with just a few keystrokes, we've got our L bracket made. Now, if you ever need to find or figure out a short code or just where a command or what a command is, typing S is going to bring up the search bar. And from here, you can simply type in any command you're looking for, say delete or fill it or extrude. These are going to come up as along with all of the other options. And if there's one that you use a lot, you can add it to your shortcuts list up on the top here. But to do that, simply type in the command and then click this little up arrow here to add it to the shortcuts. All right, so before we jump into the next tip, I wanted to say thank you to our sponsor today, and that is Zometry. If you haven't already heard of or checked out Zometry, it's an online service that allows you to upload a part file and instantly get a quote for a variety of different manufacturing processes. It allows hobbyists, designers, engineers to easily procure manufacturing for their parts that you've modeled in say Fusion 360 or Onshape and get a quote to get them manufactured in smaller quantities than you can usually get through a large factory. Not only could you get these things manufactured, you can also price out and quote different materials and types of manufacturing, everything from 3D printing to CNC machining, sheet cutting, injection molding, die cast, and more. They offer thousands of materials and options for finishing, and you can use the code down below and link to save $25 on your first order. Thank you again to Zometry for sponsoring today's video. All right, so next up, I'm gonna show you a quick trick to repeat the last command you used. This is gonna come in handy if you need to do something multiple times to your object. Now, let's say we want to add a hole. The short command for that would be an H, and then you can select the plane you'd like to add a hole, and then you've got the dialog box to the right here to give it any of the dimensions you need. We can make it, uh, say, 20 millimeters in diameter, and for distance, hitting this drop down here is going to allow you to choose all. And that's simply going to drill a hole entirely through whatever thickness plate you've got. Now, if we want to say repeat the whole command, simply clicking in the mouse right button and dragging up is automatically going to repeat that whole command. Now you can choose a different face, you can drag this around, but basically you're going to get a repeat of the exact same command quickly with one right click and dragging the mouse up. Now, observing the right click menu here, you can see a lot of commands are quickly accessible by simply moving the mouse in a general direction and clicking. This is also going to save you time when trying to create and modify objects quickly. All right, so our next tip is to use a mouse. You've probably noticed already that I'm using a mouse just by the sounds and me mentioning saying like right click, but using a mouse in Fusion or any 3D modeling software is basically a must. I know many of us like to use a laptop so that we can be a little bit more portable, I know I do, but carrying around a mouse, no matter how large or small, is going to save you a ton of time when working with Infusion and any modeling software in general. And if possible, I'd even recommend picking up a 3D mouse, like the 3D Connection Space Mouse. These allow you to orbit, pan, and zoom in and out using your left hand and kind of quickly as well with a little bit more accuracy than simply using the orbit command within Fusion. Another great tip is if you're ever trying to select, say, an edge or a face or a part of your model that is obscured, say, behind another face, holding down the left click on one of the objects in the front is going to allow you to choose the objects in the back by using this drop down uh, dialog box here. So if I wanted to select the far back plane there or face, holding that down and selecting the back one is going to allow me to do that without having to spin around my model. This can make it quick to add sketches or features to objects and faces that are hidden or obscured by the rest of your part. Similar to the last tip, using the escape key and kind of clicking off of your objects and uh, models and sketches uh, almost kind of consistently is going to help you pre help prevent you accidentally selecting an object and adding something to it or moving it. Similar to CAD, if you're a typically a AutoCAD user or 
plain 2D CAD user, escape is kind of like a safety net that you're hitting pretty consistently. If you've accidentally selected an object and you're going to do something else, hitting escape is going to deselect that so you're not accidentally constraining something to a part of your model that you don't want to or adding sketches to areas that you're not intending to. Now, these are just a handful of tips to get you started, but Fusion 360 is a super in-depth software that is easy to learn and pick up and spending just a bit of time, you're going to start to feel comfortable within the software. One thing before I let you go is to always customize your software to best fit yourself and your preferences. And in Fusion, you can do that by choosing your uh, profile in the top right here and going to preferences. And then from here, you can change a handful of custom preferences and choices within the user interface. One that many will like to use is changing up the way that pan, zoom, and orbit shortcuts are handled. And you can choose a variety of different software shortcuts and setups if you're more familiar with one of those. In particular, if you're coming from Inventor or say SolidWorks, you can choose to use the pan, zoom, and orbit shortcuts from those software with just choosing it from this dropdown. You can also customize everything else shown here and through the left drop down here where you've got a bunch of other options. I hope you enjoy this video of some of my favorite beginner tips and tricks when you're getting started in Fusion 360. Don't forget to check out today's sponsor using that link up above and down below. Thank you Zometry for supporting the channel and today's video. And if you've got some favorite commands or questions, don't forget to leave them down below in the comments and subscribe to see the next video. Thanks again and cheers.